Okay, so now I got all the individual tracks. I set the level and the panning on them. I'm not using any EQ on the board right now. Um, then I added a drum bus, which is the API 2500, and then reverb right here. And you heard me dial that in, and I put it a, um, a bunch, very wet, aggressively, and then I backed it back down. And I sort of got an overall mix without any outboard gear, except for the API 2500 on the drum bus. And then you seen me dial in my Allen Smart C2 and the Elisa X filter on the mix bus. So what I like to do is work backwards from the masters. I have a global drums here, all the drums here. So I dial in the API 2500. Now that I have the API 2500 and the mix bus compressor over everything, then I go back and dial in my hardware for my kick drum, my snare, my overheads, my stereo room, whatever I want. Because if I did um, the individual tracks first and then put on the global compression, I would more than likely use more compression than I needed for the individual tracks. It's just better working backwards like this for me in my opinion. I put on the global compression, then I dial in the individual tracks. And that's what we're going to do now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to solo the kick drum, the inside kick. And I am going to dial in the DBX 160 VU on the inside kick. So here it is. Now I'm going to hear it with the outside kick. That's nice and punchy. Alright, now I'm going to dial in the DBX 160 VU, the other channel, and I'm going to use that for snare. Um, the DBX 160 VU is a great compressor. It's a classic. It's been around a long time. As you can see, I use it for kick in and snare top a lot so the way I do drums a lot is I have kick in kick out snare top and snare bottom I will compress the inside kick and the snare top but I won't treat the kick out and the snare bottom I like leaving those natural and then blending it in together it just sounds more organic to me so now we're gonna hear the snare drum I am gonna dial in the DBX 160 VU so here we go I'm going to hear that with the snare bottom. Nice. There's my kick and snare. Okay, let's hear that in the context of the mix. If you listen, you could hear that the DBX 160 VU added more th a thick snappiness to the kick and snare that I like. I don't feel like that needs any EQ. If anything, I would dial in some 60 hertz on the inside kick. Let's hear it. Listen to this.
Okay, I like what that's doing. Let's hear it in the context of the mix. I do like that 60 hertz. Okay, I'm happy with the kick and snare. I'm happy with the individual compressor, uh, the DBX160VU on kick in and snare top. I feel like the stereo room mics could be more aggressive. I am going to add um, a stereo comp to that. So I will solo those out. And I'm going to add, let's stick with the DBX. The distressors would do good, um, but I'll use the DBX 162. Let me patch that in. All right, I like that. You could hear that it's smashing the rooms, stereo left and right. It's adding that little bit of boomy compression that I like. Um, keep in mind, when you are dialing in outboard gear, mixing analog like this, as I'm dialing in compression and EQ, you want to make sure that you're not, you're not raising the volume too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the mix now and I'm going to adjust the volume to where I feel like it should be in there. So here we go. Wow, those rooms sound really good. Here we go. Now, I like where that's at. These room mics right here with that compression, because I have that compressor on the insert of the channel strips, 11 and 12, that are hard pan left and right, because I have it on the insert, I could automate that in Pro Tools. So during a course that I want the, the drums to get more expansive, I could automate that up and it doesn't affect my compression. Or I could raise and lower my faders. I could ride my faders during a course to make it more boombastic, and it doesn't affect my compression. Here we go. This is no EQ on the inside kick, and then I'll engage the pull tech. So personally, for this drum mix, I'm just going to use the console EQ. I'm happy with the 60 hertz on that. So I am going to take this out. And we're going to hear this again. All right, so we'll take the EQ out. Here's the kick with no EQ.
with EQ. Pretty punchy, pretty punchy EQ. So I'm happy with that. All right, we got some great sounding drums in a short amount of time, mixing analog on the console. This is an MCI 428, 400 series from 1976. We used some outboard gear, a couple pieces. It didn't take much. Uh, the 428 console is a heavy-handed console. It has a lot of color to it and just loaded with transformers It adds a sound so you don't need much to get a good sound on it You get your levels you get your panning you add a couple pieces of outboard gear and you got a drum mix uh, And that's what we did today. So I appreciate you guys watching my videos and Liking them and subscribing. I have more videos coming up I have one coming up where I shot out an original 1950s Pultec EQPA in perfect condition, all original, against the AudioScape EQPA. And uh, you'd be surprised. You're going to hear the high definition files, video of it, everything. I also, also shot out two Yuri 1176F revs with the AudioScape 76F. I got that video coming up too. So thanks for watching.